Now, what is going on everyone? Today we are finally going to start dockerizing our application, which will be the very first step towards uh, testing our application with Docker Compose. And to do so, you of course need to have Docker installed. Um, so make if you haven't installed it yet, uh, make sure to head over to docker.com and just download like the Docker desktop client for your operating system. Also, if you're not super familiar with containers or if you haven't really worked with them, I would also recommend checking out their guide here, uh, their description on what a container is. And this is like pretty good because they explain, okay, a container is a standardized unit of software and it basically allows you to bundle an application uh, together with its dependencies. And like so, um, you can you have one package, so to say, that you can run. And this package itself runs in isolation. And this is what they call a container. And they also make have a nice comparison between uh, Docker containers uh, versus virtual machines, which is a very common interview question, uh, by the way. So it's like good to know the, the difference. So yeah, just make sure that you have Docker installed. And if you want to, you can read this guide here as well. Cool, um, so let's get started with uh, Docker. I have already installed the application, so that's why I will not install anything right here. Um, there is an official guide for Dockerizing uh, a web application. So you can find it by just searching for Dockerize uh, web app. And uh, then you're going to see examples of Docker files. And our Docker file that we're going to do will look pretty much exactly the same like this. Um, so what this does, it says, okay, start out with an image where node is already installed, which is kind of handy because we will need node. Um, set a working directory and um, then first copy like the package.json file, then install all the dependencies, then copy over all the code and then yeah, start the server. So that's pretty much also like if you think about these steps, it's pretty much the same thing that you would do manually, right? I mean, of course, you have Node already installed on your system, but if you had not installed it on your system yet, you would first install Node.js, um, then you would uh, somehow take a look at the package.json, you would npm install the dependencies, uh, you would copy like the, or you would take a look at the code, and then you would run it. And that's pretty much the same process. Okay, so let's get this thing going. So I am just going to create a file called Docker file. So without any extension um, and VS Code, you can already see it already knows it's a Docker file. That's why we have this whale uh, over here. Cool. And all we need to do is we need to um, say from which image we want to start. So I'm going to say I want to start from an image which already has node installed. Now, at the moment, like node, node 14 is kind of the thing. Uh, so that's why we're starting with node 15, uh, 14. It makes sense to start like from a fixed version. So there's also this thing you could also do latest, but I wouldn't recommend that. Like you should lock in or you should commit yourself to like one version. Uh, just, just so you're sure that uh, your Docker image is like stable. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a working directory. So I'm going to say slash user source app. So this is like the directory where we are working inside of the Docker container. And the next thing, and we've already seen this, it, uh, we are just going to copy the package.json inside of our container. So just like regarding the syntax, so you, if you have a command like copy, then the first command or the first path here refers to your current working directory. In this case, the root of the project and the second path refers to the working directory of the container. So what this is going to do is it's going to take this package.json file and it's going to copy it over to slash user slash source slash app slash package.json. And we want to do the very same thing for our package uh, lock because we want to be sure that we install the exact same packages that we have installed on our host machine at the moment. And now, uh, what we can just do is we can run npm 
install. And note that I'm going to add a flag here. So I'm going to say, please only install the dependencies that you need for production. And the reason is, if you look at this package.json, no, not at this one, at this one. If you look at the package.json file, uh, we need these dependencies to run our web application, right? Postgres, um, Express, uh, but we do not need like these dependencies that are only there for development, like linters and uh, test frameworks. We don't need that. So that's why we are not going to install it. And like so, our container gets a little bit smaller. Okay, and then the only thing that is still left to do is I'm just going to copy everything. So uh, like our code uh, inside of the container because we're going, the code has to be in the container somehow, right? And then I'm going to expose port 8080. And then afterwards, I'm going to execute the command npm start, oops, start. Like so. And um, if you look at our package.json file, where is it? Here it is. Um, then you see that npm start basically only does node index.js. Um, so at the very end, we're just going to run node index.js. Now, one more thing we almost forgot. Uh, we, of course, also need to create a docker ignore file. So I'm just going to touch doc docker ignore. And the reason for that is because um, if we do this operation, like this copying operation, where is it? Uh, like over here, if we do this copying operation, it would also like take the node modules that we have and copy them over. And this is of course not what we want. So that's why we need to have this Docker ignore uh, file. And then we can just copy like these two and uh, just go back to our code editor and then paste them in here. Yeah, so that should do it. And um, I would just say, let's try this out. So normally you would probably not manually create a Docker image and manually create a Docker container, but this is exactly what we're going to do now um, just to make it run. And one more thing, well, this is like a little caveat um, that can be like a little bit hard to catch. Um, if you create a container, where is this site here? Yeah, mm, no. Oh yeah, here it is, yeah. If you create a container, then the container is somehow like self-contained. And if you then tell the container, uh, hey, um, please reach out to localhost port 5432 to connect to our database, then it's going to try to connect to itself because the container on its own is like an isolated uh, entity, so to say. And uh, this is kind of a problem because what we actually want is we only want the container with our web application to start and then it should connect to our database on our host machine. And in order to make this work, we need to use um, this host.docker.internal as a host name for our database so that if we run this application uh, docker sees oh yeah um, this host on docker dot internal now we should connect like to the hosts uh, host um, system and um, that is what we need to do in addition so we are just going to do this temporarily so at the moment we're pointing to localhost right but now what we're going to do is we're going to say okay use host dot docker dot internal and right now we are pointing like to the uh, host, so to your operating system, so to say. Okay, cool. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to say docker image build um, dot. So that means uh, please give me a docker image and use the docker file in the current directory to create this image. Now I'm not going to, uh, you know, give it like a tag or anything simply because it's not really required and we don't need, uh, need it like after all. We just want to see that it's running and that in principle our Docker application works or our web application works, so to say. Okay, and here we go. So it has already pulled like this node image. It has set the current working directory and at the moment it's uh, npm installing, but only the production dependencies. 
and now it's copying like the uh, our source code over like inside of the container and uh, i think the last step in the file would be yeah to expose like the port and then to run npm start and i think it should be done in a second yeah almost cool so here we see okay it kind of built something also if you run docker image ls so that means uh, list like all the images that we have then you see ah, okay it created like a new image and this image was created like nine seconds ago so that is the one that we just created and what we can just do is we can just say docker container run and i'm going to say okay the port itself or the docker container itself is like its own uh, entity and in order to actually access the container what we need to do is we need to tell explicitly that we want to expose the port 8080 of the container to port 8080 of our host machine and um, this is what this dash p flag does and then we need to um, put in like the docker image that we want to use and this is now going to start up like a real container and you can already see ah, okay it's using host.docker.internal as a database host um, yeah user like this is my own user so yours will probably be different but this is the user that i have on my system which can actually access the postgres database okay and what i now want to do is i want to go to my pg admin just real quick i want to check out like what's there oh yeah there is already something there so i'm just going to truncate this uh, real quick okay so now it's empty and let's fire like a postman request so here we go like this is our thing bam so we get back a 201 created okay that seems good uh, remember before we truncated like our table so it was empty and now we should actually see something inside of here yes from with id 54 nice so that means we are actually running our application inside of a docker container and this application is accessing like a database that is running on our host machine and if we fire like a postman request to uh, port 8080 it's going to forward it to the container the our web application is going to do its job it's going to put like the record inside of the database and we can see the record here right so if you see this is number 54 and the other one was number 54 here as well nice so i would say that's it pretty much for dockerizing the application that is like step one uh, thank you very much for watching and um, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up um, if you have a question, please leave me a comment. You can also reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is at productioncoder. And also I've created an email list. So if you guys want to have a say in what we build next on the channel, you can just sign up there. And every once in a while, I'm just going to send an email along. So again, guys, uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe to the channel. And I think in the next one, we are going to actually use Docker Compose to spin up not just one container, but two containers like the Postgres container and our actual web application. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.